Bo, you got big plans for the day? Something tells me you don't. episode we'll talk about an interior tour of our rig. Uh, Maureen will give you a nice interior tour of our new home. We'll talk about a work camping, work camping assignment, how to find it, uh, and uh, how she went about doing that and some details about work camping. And then we'll talk a little bit about emergency preparedness and response, first aid, that sort of thing. So hope you stick around, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell for notifications and hope you enjoy. Hi, and welcome to our beautiful home that now is on wheels. We've promised to give you an interior tour, and this is, uh, again, a uh, Airstream 2003 uh, Land Yacht uh, XL396. And again, you, you um, come into the cockpit, and the seats are so comfortable. Um, Warren says it drives like a dream. So... Uh, we have, again, the controls there, radio and all that you would expect. So then walk, you walk into um, the inside and let's see. <clears throat> and at the moment, um, this is, uh, this holds out to a um, queen size bed. And you'll notice that there are cabinets galore. Absolutely love everything. Um, it gives us a, a chance to kind of have a place for everything. Um, also, across from the sofa is a lovely um, rocker um, chair that also um, moves out to lift your feet up so it has a nice, comfortable feel to it. Um, there's a lamp and then also the table comes up which is really nice so when you just have to squeeze it out a little bit but that turns into a nice desk it also has room for files and other doodads uh, also which is really nice we have the MD 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 MDS I think they're MDS, MDS they're yes. different from the the, the uh, funeral parlor shades we had before <laughs> and the, plus the they're not honeycomb and it, it yeah. broke all the yeah, time yeah we hated those things um there is a common place for the lights. Um, these come on and also have a ability to dim. And, and then also there's the um, puck lights that are very nice and very bright. Yep. <clears throat> then uh, there's a place here for um, drinks. So when you're traveling, you have the ability to put that and not have to lose it. Um, it also comes with, oops, Complimentary dog bowls? Yeah, <laughs> we, we have different things here, but um, it has ability to, again, house things that you might want to store um, that you have easy access to. Yeah, one thing I really like is um, we really liked the cabinets on our classic mm -hmm. travel trailer, Airstream. And although the outside of this rig is four and it's on a, a Freightliner, chassis the interior of this uh, is all air straight exactly so i mean they have a nice um firm uh open and shut to them mm -hmm. nice and solid um we also have a wonderful your workstation there uh this is i was going to say we also have a wonderful um kitchenette um it is kind of housing our current workstation for both of us and we have two chairs that are really nice um, there also is a um, ability that uh, whenever if we ever have an emergency, I sort of got this idea from, I 
can't remember. I'll give them credit. Um, this is sort of hand done, but it gives you all the the um, fire, hospital, vet, in case. And we also have where our site is, um, what the where we're located at Tom Johnson Family Campground currently. But it's something that I'm going to fill out every time we come to a new campground. So if there's any sort of medical emergency or emergency for both. Yeah, and, and as a former medic, this is a really important thing. If you respond to a call to a campground with 200 spaces, mm -hmm. it's difficult to know exactly which one of those campers is, because they may not know what P44 is. Right. So uh, by giving them your site number and hopefully getting a camper that's near to you to go meet them at the road, that that's would be very helpful. That's probably not a bad idea, Maybe. too. Yeah. It's very helpful. Um, What's this on your counter over here? Uh, this is a foodie uh, air fryer, and this has really come in handy. We really, again, it just did not come with the oven, and I wasn't too disappointed. It was one of those things that just, you know, a stove is perfect, so it comes with that. Um, we also have a convection microwave, so it's an ability to bake and also microwave, but the foodie has been just a, a real uh, wonderful addition so uh, we do a lot of air frying in it. And and uh, so another thing too, of course, as you see are the drawers. Um, and we have places for all your utensils, um, your silverware, but also a wonderful surprise was there is a place for the trash can. Yeah, this is the first rig we've ever had with a dedicated place for a trash can. I mean, it's not the biggest, but it certainly has the ability. And it doesn't seem like a big thing. Yeah, but it's but a big it's thing. It's been really nice. Uh, it has a nice size sink. Yeah, um, all Corian another, countertops. Right, Corian countertops. Also has a beautiful um, glass cabinet, which is really nice to kind of, you can change it up if you like. But um, it sort of gives you a chance to have a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of mirrors here. So um, I've enjoyed having um, the, the feeling of openness. All right. And another thing we have here is <clears throat> a beautiful fridge. It's also very functional. So, um, but we found that even still, um, we were talking about having some extra ability to have um, a freezer. And we actually invested in one of these uh electric freezer refrigerator combos yeah so, it basically doubles your fridge doubles your fridge, and we've, we've really enjoyed having it um it's supposed to go outside but we haven't seemed to want to leave <laughs> so uh, this is the control center right here so all the workings is again in one place it's not it's not something that you stare at all the time but it's so i like that it's on the side but it allows you to kind of monitor everything you need to monitor and control the lights and the furnace and the uh, AC. So next is the, um, oh, one thing too, I forgot. We have another wonderful surprise that came with this it is a washer dryer combination. This is a um, 2100XC Splendid uh, washer dryer and it has been fabulous. I've used it several times. It works like a champ and I love having it. I didn't think I would really like it so much because it doesn't wash a lot at a time, but it really does make it easy that you don't have to get out and haul your stuff to the laundry. So if you'll come through more you can open up the restroom. So, well, again, we have the, you gotta show everybody that. They always want to do a potty test. This is a wonderful, comfortable, uh, we call that our water closet. And then also you have your shower, which again, you have a wonderful, nice size shower, which really makes it a, a lovely- Again, a change from the change travel Change from trailer. the travel trailer. And again, we have cabinets on either side coming into the bedroom. So this makes it, I mean, there's drawers, all the, there's four drawers here, three drawers here and a cabinet. So <clears throat> it really is a lovely addition to have these many. Yeah, we have a lot more storage here than we had in the travel trailer. And honestly, I'll say we have more usable storage here than we had in the fifth wheel. Absolutely. I mean, 
I would say, if not more, it's more. So in here we have an additional TV. Um, again, a queen size bed. There is comfortable uh, closet space on both sides. That again, you have uh, the ability to have mirrors. You have storage up here. And then of course the closet. Um, and this is a slide. Uh, so it slides out and there are three drawers underneath. So it really is a, a lovely ability to kind of keep things in their place. All right, Maureen. So uh, you've shown us around your lovely home uh, and you told us the things that you really like. How about some things that are future improvements, things that you don't like, things that you wish were different? How about that? Well, I think first to start out with um, the faucet needs repair. Uh, so we are, we've got a mowing faucet uh, that we ordered and we'll be doing that in a future video. So I'm excited about that. Um, for some reason it doesn't turn, but we're going to make that uh, fixed. So then the second thing is, is we had originally looked for leather furniture, thought that that was like a, you know, must have, a must have, but actually, uh, again, you make compromises when you find your perfect rig. And this rig has a uh, fabric sofa and fabric rocker. So, um, it has not been such a bad thing. So I'm glad we sort of compromised on that. Uh, so, um, the ability to have a fireplace, uh, we enjoyed that in our fifth wheel. Um, so we don't have a home, uh, here or did not. Uh, and matter of fact, I don't know if Airstream ever made fireplaces in their rig. So, uh, but that's something that we really enjoyed in our fifth wheel as a added uh, heat source. Um, then additionally, the office space, uh, it would be nice to have some more office space, but thought that the table and uh, cabinet would work uh, with the, ext the uh, extension of the shelf, but the, the kitchenette is working just fine. So again, that is a, uh, uh, something that we've sort of wor are working with, but there's not much else. I really have been more comfortable than I ever thought we would be and uh, that about sums it up. All right, Warren, now it's your turn. Um, tell me what you, your thoughts are on what you like um, and what maybe you, you would change. So going forward. Um, I'm really pleased with the quality of the cabinetry uh, compared to a lot of the rigs you see on the market today. As I, I keep saying it's all Airstream on the inside. We're very happy with that. It's very similar to the, uh, the uh, classic 27FB we had before. Things that I would improve are, for my point, mostly on the outside. Uh, the one is I wish that Airstream had included an auto leveling system. Uh, this one has the hydraulic jacks, but you have to level it manually. And if you're not careful, if you don't use the right technique, you can actually uh, tweak the, the frame, tw put a little twisting into the frame and the, that, it's known to have an issue with the, the, the seals around the windshield being compromised that way. Uh, the second one, and frankly, this was the same way on our Airstream travel trailer. I don't know why Airstream does the freshwater fill the way they do. On our Jayco fifth wheel and also on the Bluebird, there was a single point connection for your freshwater and you could change valves, you could shift valves around to either send it to the fixtures or to the freshwater tank or whatever you wanted to do with it. Um, here, there, and, and it was the same way on our travel trailer, there is a completely separate fill location for the fresh water, and it won't accept a, a hose with the connection on the end of it. You have to have this special uh, spout thing that goes down in the thing. And conveniently on the motorhome, it's on the it's on the uh, the curb side. It's on the opposite side of where all your services hook up. So that's not exactly convenient. Right. Uh, but those are the, the the two things so far that I wish were different. But overall, I, I couldn't be happier. So let's talk a little bit about work camping. All right. Well, uh, basically, I have for. Uh, well, first of all, let's talk. What is work camping? Work camping. Well, work camping would be. Uh, again, the opportunity to, while you're traveling, you be at a place and there are so many jobs available uh, for even at our age uh, that you can really 
cut your savings, allow for a free, uh, most, most work camping jobs give you an RV site, uh, discounted, and sometimes it gives you the site, including water and electric and sewer, for, for the trade-off of working with where, whatever organization you choose. Uh, I sort of was looking for something just to kind of, you know, try out. And I heard about KOA's uh, work camping program. Um, you have to sign up, but uh, it was an easy process. We're gonna show you in just a moment. But literally, I started looking on a Tuesday and by uh, Wednesday, the next day, I had a job and we're going to be in Maine for next summer. So I'm very, very excited that uh, the opportunity uh, that they had available was a front desk uh, to be able to greet uh, all the campers that come in. Um, Naples, Maine is, uh, from what we've looked into, um, a beautiful uh, lakeside, lake area, uh, KOA. So uh, I liked the idea that they have, um, you know, uniforms, you don't have to worry about, you know, clothes, and attire, because again, we, we've pared down a lot. But let's talk about how I found it. Basically, well, the website is workatkoa.com. And when you put that in your search, you're going to get to this website. And it's become a KOA work camper and make camping great. Uh, you have a place uh, when you start how to become a KOA work camper and you click on that and the ability for you to sign up and, and the, the advantage of, of being a KOA work camper, which I found uh, very interesting and, and I think insightful is you become part of a nationwide network of campers that uh, work at the KOA. There is a consistent uh, registration process. Um, so, you know, if you work at different places, you would have to learn different things. But once you start out at, at KOA, you build on your um, experience and it gives you, uh, sometimes they give you credit to travel to the next KOA job. Um, and they, the jobs range from um, two to three months to six to seven months. So how long are we going to be in Maine? We're going to be in Maine actually maybe seven months, which is a long time, but um, we really wanted to explore the Northeast and the ability to, I have never been to Maine. I've actually never been north of Pennsylvania. So, uh, well, actually we've been to New York, but never had a chance to explore. So this will give us a chance to be in the Northeast uh, for the first time. So it sort of changed our plans, but I really am excited because um, Dan at uh, the Naples KOA uh, had had access to my resume because once you sign up, your resume is available nationwide to anyone that may be looking for uh, a work camper. So that's a, another key advantage of being in the KOA system. And are there different positions? There are, are lots of positions. Um, there's front desk. There's uh, the uh, of course housekeeping, and you have um, uh, you know. Uh, Maintenance. Maintenance. <laughs> Thank you. So there's all kinds of jobs depending, and there's all. That's all some that were like drivers, even. Yeah, if you if they have a, a need you have a for. CEO, some, yeah, some, exactly. like ferrying people from place to place. Right. All right, Maureen. Without uh, getting into specific numbers and that sort of thing, tell us a little bit about how the arrangement works on this particular work camp and assignment. Well, again, there are so many different types of jobs out there. The nice thing about KOA is. They're nationwide, uh, so you'll have the ability to pick and choose the type of area. Um, going to their website will allow you to search the different areas and what's available. There's many jobs that are available, um, depending on um, the time of year that you want to work. But the nice thing about Maine is that uh, they are, this particular work situation, is they are providing the um, site at a, a reduced rate, greatly reduced rate, uh, for the entire season. And uh, also um, paying me, the will be paying me for the hours that I work. It is a part-time um, position uh, at the front desk at the camp store, which um, is going to be like the hub of the campground. So I really like that idea um, because the campground has a fabulous pool. They have facilities um, to do laundry, 
also have, uh, he said there was Wi-Fi available. So um, all those wonderful things that you may not always get at whatever um, KOA or any other work camp situation. So that was really important to me. Um, and I like the idea that KOA really cares about um, not only their campers, but also their employees. So I'm, I'm looking forward to spending that time um, and learning more and then build on that because once you get one job completed under your belt, then if you can build on that, again, you have the ability to do online training uh, and then again, move towards any other part of the country that you may want to go. Hey guys, I uh, just want to talk briefly about emergency response and preparation and that sort of thing. I see a lot of folks using their rigs uh, to do harvest hosting, to do boondocking and do wonderful things that are out away from the beaten path, not close to any uh, cl real close access to emergency response. And so it occurs to me, uh, do they have the right training and equipment they need to handle life-threatening things that, that might come up? The very first thing that I would recommend, if you haven't already done so, please, please, please get yourself to an American Heart Association or a Red Cross first aid AED CPR course. You're going to learn uh, how to control major bleeding. You're going to learn how to do airway management, how to help someone that's choking. Uh, this is particularly important if you travel with children, toddlers, infants, that sort of thing. Uh, these are, you may not know whether the child has an allergy and they develop an allergy. You're, you're way out away from somewhere. Uh, they choke on a hot dog. It's very, very important to know how to how to clear an airway, help somebody that's choking, that sort of thing. Um, we talk about first aid kits. Uh, looking around on the internet, if you look at uh, Amazon and other places, most of the first aid kits seem to be oriented around scrapes and bumps and bruises, ice packs, uh, band-aids, that sort of thing. And that's all well and good. But that's not going to cause you a major problem when you're out in the middle of, of Zion National Park, out away from everybody. There are three major emergencies that I want to talk about today uh, that we have planned our first aid kit around. The first one is major hemorrhage, major life-threatening hemorrhage. Uh, the second one is airway emergency. And the third one is long bone fracture. Now, it goes without saying that you can't carry every piece of equipment for every possible emergency. Uh, what we carry for uh, major hemorrhage is a Marine Corps combat trauma kit. Very small, uh, easy to store. Got it off of Amazon. On the inside, it has large abdominal pads to control uh, major bleeding. Again, these are things you'll learn in your, your Red Cross first aid course. Uh, how to apply direct pressure, elevation, pressure points, and finally when and how to apply a tourniquet. But you want to have the equipment with you to be able to control major bleeding and to be able to use a pressure bandage if you need to. So you can get yourself a, a, an adhesive bandage to be able to apply a pressure bandage if you need to, to control bleeding. There's a there's an old saying uh, in EMS that all bleeding stops eventually. It's true, but we want to stop it before it causes the patient to have shock or, or major major problems. The, the second one is airway management. I spoke earlier about in your first aid course, you're going to learn how to uh, help somebody that's choking, and, and that's true. The smallest part of the human airway is about the size of that person's little finger. So if you have children or grandchildren that travel with you, take a look at their little finger. And you can see that it wouldn't take a very big piece of hot dog or anything else to occlude their airway to, 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 to block it up. And secondly, for a young child, you may not know yet whether they are allergic to insect stings, whether they're allergic to shellfish or some other food product. So I think it's important that you carry oral Benadryl to help uh, in an airway emergency and um, anaphylactic shock emergency. As part of your uh, first aid course, you'll learn how to assist someone with an EpiPen if they carry an EpiPen because they know they have known allergies. Again, if you have children, grandchildren, a loved one that has a known allergy that carries an EpiPen with them, it'd be wonderful for you to know how to use that in the event of emergency. 
Last one, uh, major long bone fractures. The, the major problem with a long bone fracture, aside from the pain to the person that uh, uh, has suffered the emergency, is that on the inside, these, rag, these ragged bone fragments are moving around and they can, ca they can rupture blood vessels and nerves and cause a lot of problems. So being able to splint a long bone fracture is very important. This SAM splint is very light, very compact, easy to store. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. Uh, you can do just about anything with a sand split. You can split arms, legs, uh, you can ankles. You can even make a cervical collar out of this if you need to. Very, very uh, flexible and easy to store. Something handy to have around. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this week's video and found it informative and useful. We're going to have some new content coming for you weekly. We're here at a Airstream Rally at Illumilina here in Marion, North Carolina. We hope to share that with you next week along with some uh, the fall colors here in the beautiful, beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. So take care. Stay with us. Please uh, click the subscribe button, like, and ring the bell for future notifications. Have a great one.